This film was made possible with support from the Alexander Capilouto Foundation. This in my hand is a graphing calculator. First introduced in 1985, it has not only revolutionized the field of applied mathematics and engineering, but it has also brought new life to education in the math and sciences. They can quickly see the results of taking a mathematical action on a mathematical object. And by, by allowing someone to, to make a hypothesis and then quickly test the hypothesis, it helps them get a more visceral understanding of, of what's going on mathematically. And that's one of the places where, where a graphing calculator comes in very handy. Researchers have shown that students who have access to graphing calculators not only showed improved mathematical skills, but also an increased interest in subject area. But it seems that this benefit is a privilege for only a few. It's really, really expensive. So it's not something like a lot of people could get around. There are high school students right now in a class that requires a graphic calculator in order to even believe in doing higher level math. And they're sharing, they don't have, or they're using one that doesn't match the instructional platform on the one the teacher has in class. In America, many standardized tests either require or strongly recommend the use of graphing calculators. In neighborhoods that are not so rich, it has become the school's job and responsibility to help students meet such requirements. But in reality, the resources are much scarcer than one would have hoped. We don't have a budget to give every student his own calculator. There's 4,000 kids in my school that they're all taking math and there's only like 400 calculators for like 20 different classes and we all have to fight for it. The task of an administrator in, in, a, uh, in a public school these days is, is very difficult because, because funding is very tight. And there are too many under-resourced schools that are being told they're wrong, they're broken, they're dysfunctional, when in reality is they need a different level of resources. I moved on to a public school in Westchester County as superintendent. We made the decision we are going to offer multiple levels of math, and we are mandating the school is going to provide the graphic calculator. And guess what? The students did just fine in it. We had the same percentages of pass fails on Regents exams that more affluent schools did where the resources were far more abundant. Just something as small as providing students with graphing calculators can make such a difference. And this is only one of the many disparities in the allocation of educational resources America faces today. In the public school arena, I can't tell you how many times I had a Siemens contestant, I had an Intel contestant come forward with a phenomenal idea but we had to say, we'll support you in name and in signature. We can't support you with the resources. I can't help you with an aquarium. I can't even give you access to the school after hours because we don't have security guards. Education today, as it always has been and should be moving forward, should be the great equalizer. It should be an opportunity for students throughout the world to come together that enable the world to move forward in passionate, purposeful, and constructive ways. And ironically, and unfortunately, it's not. Our public schools need help. Our public schools need your help. So please, share this video with your family and friends on Facebook, Twitter, through email. And visit our website at missionveritas.org to learn more about issues around education inequity and how you can help.